Now let's dip in this discussion on the Anambra governorship election as election observer. Celestine Okudili of the Situation Room joins us from our Puji studio, while Alex Ogbonaya, our spokesman for the Igbo sociocultural group, Ohanese, connects with us online. And here in the studio with us is a Rise News analyst, Emmanuel Lefeni. I want to say good afternoon, gentlemen. Now let's start with you here in the studio. And once again, um, the electoral process has been hampered by logistical delays talk to me about this Sh should we still be having problems like this especially understanding that we just are prosecuted elections in one local government although we have several polling units in the local government yes again INEC not living up to expectation when it comes to logistics because INEC shifted the commencement of mm. this supplementary election from the usual 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And one would have expected that that is to give them enough room, enough time, ample time to deploy to location. And again, according to INEC, these materials were already in Ihiala local government since the eve of two days ago when the election held... The eve of the 6th. Yes, the eve of the 6th. So if these materials were already there, it's just a matter of deploying from the local government headquarters to the various wards and pulling units, as it were. And this is 25 past 12. And in this particular local, this unit, is here in the primary school, Amamu uh, polling unit, where you have two units, Voting yet to commence. INEC officials arrived not too long ago, and the people are there waiting. Of course, you can see a number of security men on ground. So this is one problem INEC has to deal with. It has been reoccurring over the years. You expect them to, but this is even just one local government, yet INEC officials are arriving very late. It is quite disappointing that they cannot deal with this matter. And we hope that the bimodal voter accreditation system, BIVAS, will work efficiently so that they can do this thing speedily. Because how do you make up for the two and a half hours plus that has been lost before the commencement? So it is something INEC has to deal with. Um, we just hope that once they start, we will not have the same problem of the hiccups and hitches of the Beaver's accreditation machine. Well, we sincerely hope so. We are now still being joined by Alex Ogbonia, the spokesman for the uh, Igbo Social Cultural Group. Good afternoon, sir. What do you make of these delays for the supplementary election? And how do you think it will affect the uh, final results? Yeah, um, I share my disappointment with uh, the development in the local government. This election that uh, they took time to prepare, a very long time, and it's unfortunate that in spite of all the preparations, all these kind of uh, things are going on. Most painful is also when you zero down to one local government area, and the announcements have been made on when the election will start. And by now, we are not yet finding people on ground. That's the uh, personnel, INEC personnel and uh, security personnel on ground. Uh, it's not a good development. It's not good on the side of uh, INEC. Mm -hmm. But um, let us believe that they can still cope with the time because uh, we said till 4 o'clock. The only thing that do is stampede people into the election. But if by four o'clock they can say com uh, complete the assignment, well, let us say uh, it's already a bad situation. Uh, all we have to do is to see how we can manage it. Thank you. We're also joined by Celestine Okudili, an election observer. He's in the Situation Room. Good afternoon. What do you make of these delays? And as my colleague earlier mentioned, 
Is this something that we should still be dealing with, seeing as how INEC was supposed to have been prepared two days ago? Yeah, good afternoon and thanks for having me. You see, the situation now is really not encouraging because we, we, we thought that by before 10 a.m. that INEC should have set up everywhere. But unfortunately, as at 12 noon, you know, nothing was happening. I think it's from 12 that they started coming in. And that, that is not encouraging. This is just a local government election. You know, the, the, the previously on, on Saturday, we, you know, we were so disappointed, but we tried to deal with the situation, accepting all manners of excuse. But for today, I, I don't think there should be any excusable reason for what is happening today. All right, okay, let's bring it, let's, let's just try to extend this particular discussion um, to our eyes, um, news analyst, Ivan Ovini here in the studio. We've been discussing um, just off the mic about the fact that there are two polling units in that Asiani primary school. And from what we are seeing, I'm not particularly impressed with the turnout because if we're expecting over 140,000 people registered as voters for this election across the ELA local government with several polling units, two polling units should be able to poll in probably well over 10,000 people. And from the look of things, they are up to 500 people at that particular uh, polling. I mean, those two polling units there, that is even stretching it right now. Well, what we are, the visual we have just seen. Yes. Yes, you say scanty compared to uh, the, uh, what is expected, especially when this polling unit has been described, is the primary school, as one of the biggest uh, voting centers so in Ihiala. But again, you have to put it down to the fact that if officials are not there and one or two persons look in, they will just go back and they will sit at home waiting till they get information that, okay, the officials are not there before they start thronging uh, to, towards the uh, polling center. But again, let's just still keep watch on how the people will mm. turn out. Because if the officials are not there, clearly that is going to discourage a number of people from leaving their homes, coming to stand under the sun and when the, the voting is here to commence. So now that the officials are there, I think you can see more and more, according to that report, more people are now coming to the center to um, also um, make sure that they are counted, their votes count in this election. But let's not judge the turnout. But again, if you look at the average turnout across the state on Saturday, hardly any unit where you had uh, up to 25% of those who registered in that unit actually casting their vote on that day. So what we call a low voter turnout perhaps has been a characteristic of a, a number of polling going by the numbers over the years. Wow. We should not have... We're, it's unfortunate that we're hoping that now that every the signature of eyes are on ELA local government, and more importantly, that this will become a swing local government in determining who becomes the next governor of Anambra State. We're expecting that certainly people would have turned out to probably exercise the franchise. Well, a number of factors will determine whether a voter will come out or not. Mm whether you are interested in the candidates, All right. whether you be sufficiently governized by their message, mm. uh, that will also determine whether uh, each voter will make up his mind to come out. Some people will just use their point to do some house chores. <laughs> Others will just go and play football somewhere. And we see that across the country on election days. Not everybody who re registered are interested in coming out on that day to vote. But again, that's why sometimes we talk of apathy. Yes. Apathy is also an input into the political process. Because if people are apathetic, it means they are not interested in what is going on. And that also may be a function of whether they've been affected by governance over time. All right. Mm. Mr. Ogonia, back to you. 
We know, well, we have been following the results of the last few days or the progress of the elections in the last few days. And we know who the front runner is according to the numbers. Now, with this supplementary election, do you think that it would make much of a change? And my other question is, is it possible to interpret these delays as a way of INEC maybe frustrating the electoral system? Or is that too heavy handed of a question? Well, uh, the issue of turnout, let's start from there. Uh, is, um, we have been discussing about it. And I want to assure you that when we talk about polling booth, it's always like a, a, a village affair in some rural communities. Uh, so when they look in and discover that the INEC officials have not come, then the natural tendency for them to go back and stay. And the uh, inquiries will be on as where they have come. Some communities, they use gong to inform the members of the community that the INEC officials are there. So I want to believe that now they have set up their uh, facilities, people will start turning out uh, for, to vote. So having said that, I am also sure that there's a lot of enthusiasm uh, among the here like people uh, to be counted in the SSI, in the governorship SSI, the electoral SSI in a number of states. I think uh, here people are so motivated to be counted. So because of that, you see turnout. Then um, like the question asked me with respect to the trend or the voting, that's the voting pattern in a number of states. Well, uh, like um, some people still are very optimistic that there uh, still be a miracle uh, on the side of either APC or PDP. I think uh, such miracles are natural, uh, they're expected. But if things go the way they have been going, that if the uh, trend follows what have been going since uh, uh, the other day, it is most likely that Africa will clinch the ticket. So that's it. All right, uh, let's bring in Celestine, um, an election observer of the Situation Room. Celestine, we were speaking about INEC. In terms of logistics, briefly, just talk to us. Going forward, what, what should be the major takeaway from this particular election in our number of states? Categorically, how disappointing the whole process is. Yeah, because logistics, we know, has been a major challenge of INEC and all their work revolve around logistics. And it, we've hoped that before now, a lot of measures should have been put in place, you know, to ensure smooth flow of this election. I think INEC should just go back and really have a reflection, you know, on the best way to approach logistic issues. Civil society, we've made lots of uh, suggestions with regards to this. Okay, look, just imagine, an Ambre election, we know that this will happen at least two years ago, and the preparation has been since then, and there have been all that assurance of being on top of it, you know, but to the last minute, we saw what happened, and it has not ended, it still continue. So people are bringing in a lot of uh, perspective. Is it deliberate by INEC? Is it conspiracy or what? What is happening? You know, I think it's high time INEC sits up. Okay, look at today. Election that was supposed to start by 10, by 12 noon, they are still not on ground. You're talking about turnout. People will not turn out when INEC officials are not there. You know, if it's me, if I come and look and there's nobody, I'll go back home. I make official that the ones that supposedly sit down waiting for the people to come. Not people coming and waiting and looking and going back. You know, so I make really need to go back after this election and have a reflection, you know, on their, uh, 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 on their process, on their logistics. What I try yes. to look yes, up for the gaps. You know, what are the gaps? What, what has been the remote causes of all these uh, logistics? Mr. Claims? Okudili you know? said very should, well. And Mr. Okudili, just to interrupt you, we have run out of time, but thank you so much for your contributions to this show. Mr. Alex Ogbonia, as well as you, and of course, Emmanuel Ifini. Thank you so much.